really one of the things we're trying to convey again is that we feel that all customers um, will not be managed and housed, um, will not be managing and, and housing their own software in the future. It's just what is that combination that's going to work for you. Um, in the past, one of the um, showstoppers was losing control. Um, they don't, you know, customers didn't want to be told what their monthly, you know, what their downtime was going to be during the month. Um, when they're doing micro updates or, you know, limited time for them to do their testing after these upgrades are done, um, you know, kind of losing their technical expertise if they're not using it every day, if they're turning it over um, to the cloud. But we, what we have found repeatedly is anyone that is in the situation where they're going to the cloud, those resources will always um, be needed because just because you go to the N4 cloud doesn't mean that you don't need help desk support, doesn't mean that you don't need to help them the testing and security and issue resolution with N4. Um, those things will continue. And then the big piece is you're freeing those resources up to be reallocated to work on more value added projects like working on your BI plan that you've probably been thinking about for the last two years, but you living with the day-to-day, -day, you never have time to get to it. Those are all the real plus sizes, plus plus uh, side of going to the cloud and and customers really love that they have to, they have time to explore some of the new, more interesting um, projects and they can knock them off their list. Um, one of the big ones uh, in the Mr. past. Mr. Todd, let me interrupt politely okay. for a second. Um, I just want to a comment that Lori uh, Capistran made. Uh, one of my favorite people at In4, Lori. Um, love Hi, to see you here, here, but she said, "Please don't get rid of your techies. Don't get rid of them. You need yeah. them. Um, you exactly. can't. You need to have people that are going to take care of this stuff, cloud or not cloud, hosted, whatever it is. You've got to. You, you got to keep that going. Exactly. So, and let me know if I need to move slides around too, Beth. I don't know when you want me to move forward and back. I didn't ask you those things, so go for it. Well, I'm gonna I'm moving everything around anyway because I, I really trying to get done here with less than five minutes, so we have time for questions. <laughs> okay, customizations again. Um, that was a roadblock. There is best practices embedded in the M4 Cloud product. You probably implemented 10 years, 15, 20 years ago. They did what they knew best at that time. It's a high probability those customizations um, can be re-engineered using the existing functionality. You just need a consultant that understands the business side and can talk to you about what you're trying to accomplish and you can get through those. Um, I haven't run into anything that is that unique and different. I know we all think we are, but um, you can change your processes and utilize all that great functionalities that's there and you'll probably have no need uh, for a customization. Or your Infor AE can tell you it's gonna come out in the next release because if you are having that issue, somebody else is having that issue. Um, another one of the roadblocks was just you've invested in your infrastructure. Well, that doesn't always, you know, they have an end of life too. So then you're gonna be talking about spending more money on those new servers, that all um, continues to go away. Uh, Todd, is there anything else there on the infrastructure that they that they have to invest in that is a repeatable, reoccurring cost that after their initial investment they expires and then they have to put? Is there anything else you need to add there that could be costly? You know, for the sake of time right now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to get into that because it okay. is across the board. It really depends on on the client. And if you're going, you know, hybrid part on on prem, part in the cloud, you're doing solutions like that. Um, you really need to invest in the right kind of stuff. Um, don't you just talk to the, whoever you're working with um, us preferably <laughs> throw that out there but whoever it is that you're talking to, um, make sure that you're asking the the questions. Um, how are we going to connect to everything and what's the best way to do it? Because we've seen uh, mistakes across the board on on making those wrong des decisions. And so, um, yeah, definitely think it through. Okay. And uh, I think we're going to just skip this slide. There are many, many, many clients, and I don't have the number of what percentage that are successfully 
on the M4 cloud. Um, we can get specific with you. If you'd like to um, send us an email, we'll we'll get back to you and or put it in the chat and we'll follow up with you and get you specific information. I mean, everybody has their own journey. Some people um, go ahead and prepare for a year or two and get all the reports rewritten or I call them retrofitted because they're going to the cloud because um, they're usually pretty quick. Um, you know, identifying all new functionality they need to take advantage of and they think about you know, they think about these things and they get those things knocked out, um, you know, for six months to a year and and they go ahead and they switch and they start re-implementing and um, they're very happy. I mean, it, like I said, the old things are kind of gone by the wayside now. Um, but if you still don't want to go to the cloud, um, again, you can talk to us. We can try to help you, you know, go through it. If there's some reasons why you can't, we'll be happy to help you. Um, it may be because you heard your contract management isn't available in the cloud or your budgeting, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, we can call up, we can find out who's done what and what's the environment, what was the, what was the, you know, the mix on your applications that you own, what's, because when you hear things don't work, it's, it might be because of five other things they have. And in my mind, I always say it's their technology baggage from before, and I, you know, I never know exactly what it is because I have to get to someone like Todd. But um, there is a way to figure out um, your solution, and you know, whatever that is for you, we'd love to we'd love to talk to you about it and help you figure out um, your timing and your roadmap. And um, let's turn around for the questions. So Emily, what do we have on our questions hey, here? Wait, wait a sec second, Beth. But another yes. quick thing we have. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump forward to another slide. Okay. And the questions, and uh, we want to make sure I don't leave out Charles' question because it is a good one. Uh, okay. One of the better ones that we've heard. And so, um, let's just talk real quick about um, what options do you have. And so, um, I, I think we. I don't know, Beth, you want to cover this a little bit, or if I want to sure. jump into it, tell me. Sure. Yeah. So you have options where you can keep your existing system on-prem and upgrade it to version 11 and run it on-prem. You can run it at a third-party provider. You could um, keep, pull everything over to the cloud or phase it in. Maybe you'll put your financials and supply chain on the cloud you know, this year and then the next year, move over your HR um, payroll, whatever, works for you, you can have certain applications on-prem and some on the cloud. It doesn't have to be 100% all at once. Um, so those are the things that you, you know, there's so many options for you. But again, you really need to talk about what applications you have and, and figure out the dollars and cents and the business sense. Um, so that you could be innovative in your approach. And, and we, like I said, we'd love to help you with that. And you just um, let us know what your reasons are for why you wanna stay um, and not go to the cloud right now. And we'll try to help you figure out what's the best solution. Is there anything that you wanna add there, Todd? I do, thank you, Beth. Um, the options that you have, and this is going to, you know, play into a few of the questions that um, that will be popping up. I, I I see a couple there, and and we're going to answer answer a couple questions um, now. In fact, so, uh, I'm going to tie this into what uh, what Charles asked here about what about your custom programs, um, the the custom COBOL programs you may have sitting on your S3 system. Um, you, maybe you've got some some Perl that's written to do some stuff. Some If you're on a Windows server, you've got some batch script or some shell scripts that are running. What do you have customizations that aren't there for you? Um, you can't use them. And so that is, that is a, a, an amazing question, really, um, because it's what's keeping people from going um, in some cases. And so what we're finding out, and if you didn't see our session earlier on N4OS, um, you know, please grab a copy of that or look at it somehow. Go to our website, jksava.com, um, when it's available and check that out. Um, or just give us a call because with the N4OS and, and that product, there are so many things that are thrown into, into that product, um, again, depending on your licensing, but gives you that ability to, to do some of those things that you normally would have customized 
um, to, to do it outside of the application um, and use some tools um, like, like um, ION, um, like um, IPA, which, you know, there's the controversy of what's going to replace what at one time. So that's a completely different conversation. And then, you know, Mongoose um, and some other tools out there and even um, just getting to some of the, the program that's available from a configuration standpoint. And this is not you going in and customizing the program. This is using tools that were given to you to make best use of the product that's in the background. And so you're using the data, you're using the business logic, you're using everything that's already built into the application through new tools that are actually really cool tools um, to be able to do some of the stuff that you typically had to customize for. And so, again, we're, we're getting rid of that word customization. Everyone hates that. Hey, we customize our products, so uh, we can't do anything else forever. Um, but that's not the case here. You can actually take what is what is out of the box, sitting out there for the most part. And we have some stories where that hasn't been the case. But for the most part, you can take what's out of the box and use the tools given to you um, and, and write those reports, write those programs, do that. Um, some of the the processes that happen when when data is entered and then it it needs to be um, massaged or, or migrated to some other areas where you've written custom programs for it and all of that can be done within the framework provided um, for you whether it's in the cloud whether it's on prem there's no um, there's there's no real distinction there. You'll hear things where you can only do it in the cloud, or you know you don't have access to this on-prem. Uh, for example, you know the Burst product. Um, so you'll hear that that's a cloud-only product, um, but that is actually available as what they call an appliance that can be installed locally. I think it's a huge deal. Um, to um, to do that, there's some um, maybe hurdles, and maybe they've changed that since I started working with Karn on this thing um, years ago. Um, haven't done it lately, but um, all of the stuff. And again, Charles mentioned here about you know generating bank files. All of that stuff can be done through processes that are built into um, into the product moving forward to version you know to the uh, the latest version ten stuff, and then into the eleven uh, products. Um, and again, Beth, as you had mentioned already, <clears throat> jumping forward to that that hybrid solution. Yeah, we have one um, minute left, Todd. We, I don't know if they kick us off or what they do, but um, yeah, we have we have one minute. We only, <laughs> I we had Eleven minutes. We only have one minute. Oh, I thought we were done at four twenty. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's why you finished so quick. That's what You're I thought. I thought, yeah. I, Go ahead, sorry. Sometimes if you want to jump in there and look at that and, and confirm, maybe Emily, you can confirm that because I can just keep on talking. Um, and so um, I will try to clear this up. We don't have uh, less people on here yet, so they're not all running to the, the next thing. And so 50, yeah, we had 40 minutes. So we got till one, until 30 minutes after. And so, um, having an on-prem and a, a cloud solution here um, would allow you to to migrate data from one to the other using the processes that are all in place some of them are already canned and some of those are, are out of the box they already have that available for you um, and some of them um, you can just design yourself um, as going forward or, or have a an awesome consulting firm like jk Seva do it for you and so um, you, you have options um, is what I'm saying. Um, that's the main thing. <laughs>